Hi, I'm Lauren Francesca. I'm Brad Grunberg. And you're watching Jing. How to Start. Oh, today boy. we today. have another one of Brad's friends. Yeah, let me give you a little <laughs> list of people that this guy's worked with. Okay. Ready for this? Adam Sandler, who we love. Chris Farley, who we miss. David Spade, Steve Carell, J. Lo, Jack Nicholson. Okay? How about a nice hand? Pete Siegel's here, Hello. director. You forgot Eddie Murphy. Oh. And, 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 and Brad Grumberg. And, and, oh, that's true. That and, poor, well, I, 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 Eddie Murphy and this poor putz. Yeah, you're right. You're right. AKA. AKA Johnny, Johnny Cocktails. Cocktails. <laughs> Back in the day, yes. Pete, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You're an amazing director. You've been, how long have you been directing? For a very long time. A long time now. Um, it's the, the years have caught up with me. Yeah, almost 25 years in movies. How did you get into it? Uh, I had no idea that I was going to wind up here. I mean, literally, my <laughs> career literally started with this man here. My yes. first network pilot wow. that yep. I produced and directed and wrote was called Fox Across America. And um, fortunately uh, for me, uh, uh, Joe DiVola, who was the executive at Fox at the time, made us meet every single comedic talent in Hollywood. And that's where I met Sandler for the first time. I met Spade. I met everybody. Fred Wolf. Fred you know, Wolf, who uh, became a big director, yeah. a big writer. Yes. Former uh, head writer for SNL and eventually in the Fox commissary. Yeah, I'm waiting on this gentleman here, and I get to kind of perform for him uh -huh. as I'm serving him food that's great. on this Fox Across <laughs> America. And it was a great concept. It was basically three people go across America interviewing big celebrities, but we get to learn that town, learn about the people. Oh, awesome. It was ahead of its time. Yeah. Don't you think, Pete? Talk show on the road. We had yeah. camels. We, camels in our pilot. We had camels <laughs> in our pilot. We did. Really? Oh, monster truck. Was that in Re Reno, right? Reno. Yeah, Reno, yeah. Nevada. Great did town. Did you go across America with it? Uh, we did one pilot. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that was he it. was great. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. That was it. I went up against the big comedians. Uh huh. And, uh, and I ended up getting it. It was the best. That's amazing. Yeah, started my so, career in the commissary. So did you have to audition for being in the commissary? Or? I kind of, yeah. And then they brought Board me test. in. Yeah, they, yeah. We oh, had wow. screen tests, and I got to screen test with all these other comedians. They kind of liked me. and. I didn't know if I got it, and then I read with all these guys, and then all of a sudden, Pete kind of, yeah. you know, as I was giving him his chicken Was salad, your so. test at Dodger Stadium? Did we do that there? Yeah, we did it at Dodger on Stadium. On home plate. On home plate, yeah. right after Kirk Gibson hit that home run. Yeah, it was and near there. It was like, yeah, yeah and it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was incredible just to be there all alone. Remember, yeah. we were all yeah. alone at Dodger Stadium. I got in trouble because I, I just hit a couple balls into the left field, <laughs> and they said, you can't do that. You can't do that, right, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. I yeah, we did screen tests with other comedians, the ones that, you know, the final guys. Yeah at Dodger Stadium, that's and so cool. oh my God, yeah. it was unbelievable. That's a, that's a really fun concept for a show. I wish that's that's just kind of like interviewing people. You like, know, that's the one thing, and Pete, you, yeah. you could probably attest to this. There's so many things that, you know, luck and timing is what mm -hmm. really, what life is all about, what show business is all about. Yeah, well, look what you're doing now. Yeah. Yes. Right? It's true. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. Full circle. Now, we, uh, now you're interviewing him. Yeah, now Except we're this is nicer than... Uh, <laughs> The Silver Sox <laughs> Stadium in Reno. Exactly. Uh, you we went like, to the brothel as well. I know. I yeah, know. I mean, for research. Okay. I, and I went to research before we shot there just to be, you know, because I'm uh -huh. method. You know, yeah. I'm a method actor. Okay. okay. Um, but uh, it was, you know, it was crazy. We met the guy who owned it. Remember? No, it, it was actually kind of scary. Yeah, because, it was kind of scary. So I went with um, Steve Slavkin. Yes. Who was our other head writer. And we walked in and uh, a buzzer, you know, sounds. And then all the women line up, and it's just so depressing. And we just said, and we're trying to shoot like a comedy segment in this. Um, it was the, not the chicken ranch, the Mustang ranch. Mustang ranch. Mustang ranch. Right. And it was so Joe depressing. Joe Cortez. Joe, Joe something. Joe something. And it was yeah. kind of mob yeah. related. Oh yeah, he was mob. And I, mob. when we left there and we had a tour of the place, I said, there is nothing funny about this place. There's nothing funny I want to do here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and we left, and I got an angry phone call from the head guy who said, what do you mean you're not coming? What do you mean? I, I gave you a whole tour. I stopped everything. You're not coming by. And I'm like, oh my god, I got the mob mad at me now. This is not going to end well. I'm not getting out of Reno. Let me ask you, you've done so much great stuff. What was it, wor what was it like working with Chris Farley? Tell us about that, Tommy Boy. Well, Chris, that was the, the beginning of my career. As a matter of fact, so right after Fox Cross America, which was my first network thing, I, within a year or two, I got to do some HBO specials. And um, my first one was with Meryl Marco and Harry Shearer. 
and that went well. And, and so uh, I bugged Chris Albrecht, who was the then head of HBO, and he said, you know Roseanne? And I said, oh my God, yeah, she's at the height of her career. She's the Lucille Ball of our time. This is, you know, late 80s, early 90s. Well, her husband, Tom Arnold, Boy, and I said, <laughs> okay, cool. Well, but Tom's best friend was Chris Farley, and he was friends with Jim Carrey and Ben Stiller. And so in these HBO specials, I got to meet and work with all these guys in the, their infancy of their careers. And um, Chris was by far the funniest man I'd ever seen, met, <laughs> experienced in my life. He was already on SNL, so people knew of him. And our segment with him for this thing was um, he was trying to pick up girls at the Glendale Galleria, and we just followed him with a camera. <laughs> and it was all improv. Oh, it was hysterical. Yes. Uh, then he came on the Jackie Thomas show, which is the spinoff of Roseanne, and um, that was the second time. And then by the time you know I got my first movie, which was Naked Gun in 1993. I love that movie. Within, too. thank you. Within a couple <laughs> of months, the, a script for Chris came on my desk, and I said, "Oh my God, I'm jumping on this because I think he's going to be the next huge star." Unfortunately, the script I shouldn't have jumped on. It had, uh, well, a lot of problems. Let's just put it that way. But that was the beginning of my adventure with Chris. Oh. You were uh, Leslie Nielsen on Naked Gun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, and, How was Leslie Nielsen? Yeah. Um, uh, very different on screen really? from how he is in person, how oh. he was in person. Um, I think he was a little mad that David Zucker didn't direct the third one. Oh. And I think he felt hurt. And like, and then this young punk kid who's 30 comes in and is like, mm -hmm. that, I, in, in the beginning of my career, I, I learned that as a young director, old guys don't like taking direction from me. Um, because I worked with Jack Lemmon and uh, wow. James Garner, and they all were a little bit like, what do you mean? And, <laughs> and like, because directing is all about earning trust. And they just think that, why do I need to trust this guy? He doesn't have a career. You know, I've, I've worked with, you know, John Ford, said Lauren Bacall and Jack Lemmon, and I'm like, yep. You're right. <laughs> I've just got Johnny Cocktails. You know? So uh, is it going to go great? This guy. <laughs> so uh, it, it was just a little difficult. Uh huh. And what was Lauren Bacall like? That's so cool. Spectacular. She <laughs> kept thinking that the prop truck was a shopping spree, <laughs> that she could just go in there and say, I love this watch. <laughs> this mug is at for sale. I'm taking it. And she just went through and they said, No, no, Lauren, you, these are props. And she goes, I don't care. <sighs> You know who I am. And <laughs> she just took a bag and just, you know, went to town. Um, yeah. What about Mr. Adam Sandler? You Sandler uh, did guy. not go on the prop truck. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, knew, I knew Sandman from, from knowing Farley and Spade. Yeah. You know, I would just bump into him at parties and things and um, restaurants. And then um, he saw Sunny Professor and called me and said, that's some funny fucking shit. Yeah. And uh, are we allowed to say that? Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, so that led to, um, hey, you know, Jack Nicholson is a little picky about, you know, who we hired to direct anger management. Yeah. But you made, you got a check by your name. So come on in and, and let's talk. And so that led to the next three movies. Wow. That was great. And what was Eddie Murphy like? Eddie's fantastic. Um, he is probably the most brilliant comedian I've worked with, besides Adam Sandler um, <laughs> and Chris Farley. Uh, no, but he's a very different kind. Uh -huh. yeah, probably the most brilliant improv uh, comedian by far. And um, it's really interesting because I, I got a chance to work with him, you know, when he was still, you know, at, at the height of his career. And all of his handlers would, would tell me how to talk to Eddie, you know, give him direction through the AD. So it was like, uh, well, tell him that the next scene is going to be about dot, dot, dot. And then it was walkie-talkie, walkie-talkie, walkie-talkie to somebody I'd never see. I said, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to go up to him, you know, and they go, no, 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 don't. He's the emperor. And I went into his trailer, and he had, I'll never forget, he had the granny head on, the granny makeup, but he was in his regular sweats, you know, fat suit, and he was just playing video games. He goes, hey, Pete, come on in. I'm like, okay, you want to play? And we just start playing video games, and I just start talking about the scene. And, and then about 
half hour later, because the lighting setups were long for that movie, it's like, okay, Pete, we need you back on the set. I said, I'm going to go. So you cool with what I described? Yeah, I'll see you out there. I went, that was all a <laughs> bunch of BS, what I've been told. Right. I'm just going to start talking to this guy like a normal human being. And so from then on, we had a great relationship. And you know, he was the first guy on the set, on the, on the lot every day, because it was six hours of makeup wow. to put it on. Oh, my. Then we'd act. Yeah. He'd act. Then it would be two and a half hours of makeup to take it off. Because wow. they had, you know, to take the glue off. Yeah. And so I could never leave the lot knowing that the, the makeup trailer light was still on. I felt like I can't leave him here. So I'd go in and I'd just, you know, shoot the breeze and we'd watch TV and joke. And I remember Rick Baker, who's won like, I think he's retired now, but at that time, seven Academy Awards, including one for the first Nutty Professor, would yell at me and says, Pete, just stop talking. I can't get the makeup off when you're talking. Make him talk. So um, I learned to kind of, you know, manage that a little bit, but he is still a patient of my wife's, who's his dentist. Oh, that's so, yeah. so cool. Oh, yeah. Yes, your wife's one of the best dentists. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 uh, that's good. Sandler. To know. Sandler goes Sandler to her. Goes yeah. to her. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's easier to talk about who doesn't go Don't to Linda. Than, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Linda's the best. So sweet. That's awesome. What was it like working with Jack Nicholson? How do you direct him? Was that was, how was that a little bizarre? It was uh, scary. <laughs> okay. Scary because okay. there. That was anger management. Right? Anger management. Yeah. There's no actor I've ever worked with who can suck the oxygen out of a room like Jack. And I could tell even Sandler was, you know, a little intimidated. We all were intimidated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then one day I remember, uh, this was in downtown New York. We were filming and I walked by an office building because uh, we couldn't go back. The base camp in New York doesn't exist. It's like there were trailers, but they're 16 blocks away. So we just stayed in this, this office building. And Sandler was laughing. He goes, oh, you are in such trouble. I went, what? He goes, he is so pissed at you. I'm like, what are you talking about? What, what did I do? And he said, Jack said to him, because I guess I, I like to, you know, I block a scene. And I said, well, maybe your character comes over here and picks up the coffee and then walks over and opens the window and whatever, you know, based on the script. And supposedly Jack told Adam, I'm one of the world's greatest actors. You think Pete would like to know where I'd like to walk? Oh, and I went... Oh. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but okay. That's a good impression. Like well, yeah, everybody like does. Lauren Michaels and yeah. Jack, but yeah. um, but so uh, I I learned to uh, uh, to adjust my my style a little. One bit. great story. Um, I w he was so so gracious to let me work with him on Get Smart with oh that's so with, cool with uh, Steve Carell. So uh -huh. I wanted to, so Steve Carell too. Wow. Yeah, Steve Carell. So I wanted to give him a little gift. So I gave Pete before anybody, uh -huh. a vintage uh, 1966 Get Smart Lunchbox. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then Steve Carell got wind of that. He goes, where, <laughs> where, 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 where did you get that? So I you got one, you know, for, you I to got get one for Steve Carell. <laughs> and he was like, wow. And it was really cool. So I went on the set after I worked and did my scene another day and I saw Pete. It was great. What The thing, the thing that uh, I'm thinking of, like, you work with one of my favorites, J Lo. What was yeah, that like? Yeah, and you for, in Queens too, in, which is where Queens. I'm from. So yeah. where in Queens oh, did you shoot? We shot, um, gosh, all over. Um, but uh, she's fantastic. Uh huh. Uh, she's yeah. really an excellent actress. She's yeah. Actor. Um, very smart. Very intuitive. She was. She reminded me a lot uh, in certain ways of the way we worked with uh, Drew Barrymore. Oh, wow. Because Drew and I had a really easy relationship where sometimes I would just point up mm -hmm. or point down, meaning a little bit more, or a little bit less. And she went, and, or, you know, I, I'd say a one, two, or three, you know, one being the most energy, three mm -hmm. being the least. And sometimes less is more with acting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you tell me, yeah, you know. We both but, do. Um, <laughs> and J-Lo was like that, too, you know, and I would just say, maybe just a... Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> And uh, she did it, and, wow. and she, you know, it's it's hard to do, to balance uh, comedy and drama, and she was very natural with that, and so um, we had a great time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, she was. I laughed, I cried great in that movie. movie. I was on the airplane watching it, so it was like a lot I of was people like, saw that one on an airplane. Yeah, and yeah. I was just like, I can't believe I'm like crying during during a, a J Lo movie right now. But it was, it was awesome. Good. It was great. It was yeah. it was really really great. Now, also, it's I was I was reading about you. And it said you won eight Emmy Awards? Uh, local. 
in Los that's, Angeles. What did you announce? They're a little bit smaller than still, the big that's ones. That's really cool. That's they still have wings and a globe, but so, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. my kids don't know the difference. But they look great yeah. together. They look great together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. What did you do that won Emmys? So I started my career at uh, Channel 2. Oh. And um, there used to be things on TV. Well, I guess once in a while you might still see uh, Eye on L.A. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was Eye on L.A. and then CBS had Two on the Town for 10 years. And it was about things to do in L.A., people stories and things like that. And, and so they tried a comedy version of that on Friday nights called Friday at Sunset. And so my first assignment was, you know, it's a story on the best pizza places in L.A. And I said, uh, can I be creative? They went, eh, yeah, whatever. Can I do whatever I want? They go, um, just get the name of the place spelled right in the address. <laughs> so I did a black and white takeoff of Citizen Kane. And uh, that was, I guess, unusual in local television, so it won a a local Emmy, and then the next one they said, okay, uh, that worked pretty well. Best pool halls. I went, I'm gonna do whatever I want. I went, okay. So I did a takeoff of The Color of Money. And a common theme started to occur in these little local segments that I would do, and I would always hire my then girlfriend to play a prostitute in these <laughs> little family things, friendly. family things, you know, about best pizza. Why would there yeah. be a whore in this? Yeah. But, you know, oh, I just, oh, there was a whore in it. So, and it was, <laughs> so Linda kept playing a prostitute, yeah. and uh, <laughs> well, I kept winning Emmys. Oh, so it's like she was my lucky charm. So, I love yeah. so before, ranching, before she was stupid. a dentist, she was a She was a actress? young dentist. No, oh. she's a couple years older than me. So, oh, oh my gosh. You know, so when I graduated from USC as an undergrad, she was graduating UCLA as a dentist. Wow. So I had zero chance. Wow. But then I... Got lucky and I just started doing local TV stuff and you know. That's awesome. Did you That's had always want to be a director? Is that, I mean, did I you, had no idea. I mean, <laughs> I I thought if I could win one of those little Emmys by the time yeah, I was yeah. thirty, yeah, I was set. You're set uh -huh. forever. And I won my first one when I was twenty four, and I uh -huh. thought, well, now what do I do? <laughs> so um, when I got the call from David Zucker to audition to come in and just interview for a Naked Gun, I was terrified because I I thought. What do you do in a movie interview? I just been telling people where to go for pizza. <laughs> so, um, so I, I said, do you dare like give a note on the script? Do you dare like give a suggestion? Is that blasphemous? I didn't know until I had meeting after meeting. They kept calling me back. Now you're going to meet Leslie Nielsen. Kept come, now you're going to meet Priscilla. Now you're going to meet O.J. Simpson. Oh. Now you're going to meet. I'm like, what else can I say? I I was done. But at the time. You know, because the Naked Guns did a lot of parodies, and The Crying Game had just come out. Yeah, very uh, uh, great film. Some controversial moments. So yeah. I decided I'm going to take that. I'm going to pitch. Uh, how about this? That Anna Nicole Smith's character has a penis, yeah. and they went, "You've got the job." <laughs> <laughs> so well, you're brave. Yeah, you're yeah, very, yeah, you're yeah, very yeah. brave. I didn't know what else to say. Did you? Well, yeah. You're very funny. Are you just naturally funny, or did yes, you have to work on that? Yes, yeah. You go to like he, improv. The or? New York Jew. He is. This is who he really is. <laughs> and on the set, it's even more. He's he's such a actor's uh, you know uh -huh. actor. He's such an actor's director. He really works with you. Let you do what you want. He, hey, yeah, give me one. What you? Yeah, just throw one away. Of course. Me, that's what you do. <laughs> not you know you're not controlling. You know, no ego. That's uh -huh. what's great about Pete. Um, what would your suggestion be for a young young director give us some advice what would you do if you're a young director in Hollywood well I do I did not go to the film school at USC but I do a lot of work with, with the SC film school yeah. uh, I was an English and broadcast journalism major and my route is going to be different from anybody else's route as their route is going to be different from right. everybody else right, right. there is no one way so I think the best advice is to go out and make stuff mm -hmm. just make stuff and now with YouTube you really can so just, you know, everyone's got a laptop yeah, and you yeah. can have a little edit system there. Mm -hmm. And my gosh, your cell phone, you can <laughs> shoot a movie practically on it. I think yeah. Soderbergh did. Yeah. So just go out and make stuff, write stuff, make stuff and <clears throat> put it up and see if you get some likes. And eventually you'll have a reel. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then that will potentially lead to something yeah. with a little bit more money and a budget and awesome. just start climbing. I, I have a question. So what do you, when you're casting, this is the last question because we are wrapping up right yeah, now. Exactly. When you're, when you're casting, what do you look for? Like, is there any specific thing that you look for specifically? Any tips for actors out there well, who are reading for you? Casting, mostly from a writing standpoint, is the most horrifying thing because you hear your words for the first time said out loud and you realize how much you suck as a writer, yeah. or potentially how much they suck as an actor. <laughs> and then when you finally hear your words 
spoken the way you envision them, right. it's just like magic, you know, the clouds part. <laughs> you know, that's the one, you know. <laughs> and so it's, it's a scary but exhilarating part of the process. And, you know, um, as my advice as a, for an actor is uh, don't talk too much in the interview. Just uh -huh. go in, introduce you yourself, work. and do it. Gotcha. And if they've got a note, great. And if not, mm -hmm. that's it. It's a brutal, <laughs> a brutal <laughs> business. Pete, this well, has been yeah. unbelievable. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Great to talk to you guys. What, yeah. uh, where can people, your social media, follow yep, you? I'm, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram and uh, and uh, the, the tweeter. The tweeter. <laughs> the tweeter. <laughs> you got some great Just movies. Pete Siegel. Yeah, Pete, Pete Siegel. Siegel. You got a movie coming out in January. What's yes, that movie? It's called uh, My Spy with Dave Bautista. Okay, yeah, My Spy. Where is it going to be? Where is it going to be? It's going to be in theaters. Awesome. Uh, it's, yeah, STX Studios. So, right. uh, yeah. We're, Amazing. We're, well, we will all go yeah. watch My Pete, Spy. When, yeah. when somebody comes in to read, remember this. <laughs> I will. It's really, really good. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Thank you so much Thanks, for coming Pete. on, Thank Pete. Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to follow Pete Siegel everywhere. Check out his movie coming out in January. By the, by the way, you know, when I was waiting on great tipper. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's very, but it's fun. Right. Five stars, you. guys. How to start. Yes, Pete Siegel, everybody. Pete. Thank you, Thanks, Pete. Pete.